All right. Um, I want to say ETM Hotel Peace to those who um, will be watching this as an archived video. And if you happen to be watching live and tuned in right now, uh, say uh, Hotep again. Appreciate taking time out to um, hang out with me for a little bit. Um, so this is a continuation. Uh, by the way, this is the brother Wujau. And um, I'm basically continuing these very short uh, bite-sized digestible lessons um, related to the language of Rodney Kemet. Uh, what is which which is what it's called, but the language of ancient Kemet. All right. Um, so uh, I've done a few so far. So if you are um, just checking it out, checking it out, or finding out for the first time, just scroll through the the Facebook group. We're in the Amara Squad uh, Facebook group, Amara Squad Scholarship Facebook group, and so they're kind of throughout the group. You know, different posts get pushed up and down. So you may have to search. Matter of fact, on the left-hand side of the group, you can click on videos and see um, a list of the videos that are in the group. Okay, so uh, this is today. I'm going to do a quick lesson in adjectives, but this is part two. Part one, I, I touched brief, briefly touched on adjectives before. So this is basically a continuation of uh, adjectives. So I call these bite-sized digestible uh, quick lessons uh, they're not meant to be an exhaustive class so I wouldn't want you to expect to um, you know learn something extensively as if we were in class so I do have classes for that uh, study courses uh, the beginners course has been um, running for quite a while and I will be starting a grammar course in the springtime so um, yeah, if you're interested in the, in the course, uh, make sure you visit uh, our website, sessionmetanetra.com. That's full of information, the different topics, um, articles on ancient Kemet, some of the key issues that's been floating around social media, uh, misinformation, uh, some resources on the, on the website, and um, some transliterations and translations that were done by the Seshu Mani Metanetra group. All right. As far as the course, if you're interested in the language course, the beginner's language course, visit SebaUniversity.com. The language course, you can register there. And uh, it's live interac interactive with myself and other teachers that will assist as well. Or you can inbox me if you find out more information. But the information is there at SebaUniversity.com. And also, you can pick up our publications. Um, three in number, the fourth is on its way. Uh, in the spring, which would be the grammar that you see on your right hand side. But the first three, um, the has the Egyptian hieroglyph writing system been deciphered, a rebuttal to Walter Williams. That was our book addressing this is written um I wanna say going on almost two years now. Yeah, it would be two years. Well this December, we're the beginning of this year. So but it was to address the, the issue of whether the language had been deciphered or not. You know, there was a, a debate that was brewing up all the summertime of that year. And so we decided not to address, you know, people who are not familiar with the language or don't have any, you know, publications out there. Um, we decided to address Professor Walter Williams, who actually wrote a, a very good book, um, The Historical Origins of Islam and Christianity. But in his book, there's a very small portion in the appendix where he where he makes the claim that the writing system has not been deciphered, which became the champion cry, uh, you know, towards that um, debate that didn't occur. So we wrote a book to address that. And um, so I would just suggest picking it up if you if that's a question that you want, you've been wondering about. The next one on the right is the Simplify Sesh Metanetra Penmanship, a lesson in Egyptian hieroglyphic writing. Book one, Monoliteral, was written by Sonet Emiket Aku Kenshai Akinyi. And that book is geared towards teaching how to actually scribe or write the language, starting with the monoliterals, one of the, the 24 most prolific glyphs in the writing system. And then the third one is the textbook that we use for the beginner's class, a beginner's introduction to Medu Nature. All right. So uh, back to our lesson for today. I will try to make this very brief, and but not 
too brief that you know it goes over your head but I'll keep it simple and not get too technical uh, hopefully all right so let's go ahead and jump in and by the way uh, I can't I, I will check the the um, comments once I'm done to see if anybody has any questions if anyone is watching <laughs> like I said um, most of the time people are watching as it's archived all right so let's dive in so where we're going to pick up at is what's called specific adjectives and the first one, one we're going to deal with is what's called a distributive adjective and this particular one is neb all right and you see it with the basket the glyph itself is a is a basket but we transliterate it as neb now um, distributive adjectives are used to refer to each and every person or thing and Ronnie Kimmett by the way, Rodney Kimmett, you'll hear me say that a lot and type it out a lot. Uh, Rodney Kimmett is the indigenous name of the spoken language of ancient Kemet. All right, Rodney Kemet, Ra meaning mouth. Ni is the um, genitival adjective of or belonging to. And Kemet is the toponym for the kingdom. So it's, it's literally the mouth of Kemet or the mouth of the country of Kemet but it's not uh, taken, shouldn't be taken literally, it's what comes out of the mouth. The mouth became synonymous with language, speech. Just like we say, runu peret im heru. And ra'u is the plural form of mouth, but, it, but we translate it as utterances for coming forth by day. That's the name for the Book of the Dead, for those who may not know. All right, so Rodney Kimmett uses the adjective neb which may be translated as all, any, each, every, all sorts of, etc., depending on the context. It is placed directly after the substantive it modifies and before any other adjective. And by the way, substantive is another word for noun. So it's to place directly after the noun it modifies and before any other adjective. So for example, we have this sentence here. Uh, inu neb nefer. And it means all sorts of good products. And it's coming from uh, the source of the peasant, the eloquent peasant. Now, like other dependent adjectives, neb is declined for gender and number. And decline is a word that we use in um, language studies or linguistics, similar to the word conjugation. People may have heard that word conjugation. Conjugation is uh, something that takes place with verbs. And declension or declining or decline is something that takes place with nouns and adjectives. All right. It's the same thing where you attach morphemes to um, signal or signify gender and number and things like that. All right. But that's probably another topic. So here's the declension of neb. So we have the masculine singular, which would be neb. The masculine plural would be nebu. Feminine singular, nebet, and feminine plural would be nebut. And some people pronounce this nebwet, and they'll put an E between the W and the T. So here, that's the declension or, of, of neb to show how it shows gender and number. But here are some examples of its in use. So we have hika neb, which would be all magic. The word hika is magic, and neb is all all the adjective uh, that's a masculine example here's a feminine example well let's go to masculine plural so we have tau nebu all lands now we heard the term ta meaning land and we say ta we for two lands thus dual and tau is plural tau nebu all lands here a feminine example we have ket nebet everything ket meaning thing and neb meaning all, every, or any. It can, it can mean anything, everything, all things. And the feminine plural, we have uh, chasut, nebut, all foreign lands. And some people may be familiar with this word chasut when we say hika chasut for the hyksos, the so-called hyksos, hyksos dynasty, hika chasut. This is the same word, chasut, foreign lands, and nebut, all foreign lands. All right. Now the adjective neb 
all, every, cannot be independently, cannot be used independently as a substantive and therefore should not be confused with the substantive neb, lord, master, owner, although they appear in sim similar form. So what this is saying is that there is a, a noun for the word neb means lord or master. And because they look exactly alike, people will confuse it. And those who may not be, be too familiar with, with the grammar may use it incorrectly. Um, so this is what is being pointed out, that we should not confuse the two. Uh, um, neb as a noun would be, would be written first. For example, if I were to say Neb Tawi, which is a common uh, epithet for kings, the kings of Kemet. And it means Lord of the two lands, Neb Tawi. But if I say Ta'u Neb or Ta'u Nebu, I'm saying all lands. I'm using it as an adjective. So if the Neb comes, if the word Neb comes after a noun, then it's not the word Lord. It's, it's the adjective for all. So just keep that in mind. Uh, so here's some follow the following Id idioms are used as an equivalent of everyone, each one, or everything. So, for example, we would say Zineb, which would mean everyone. But literally, it means every man. The word Z here means man. We have Buneb, everyone. Herneb, everyone. Literally, this, this, the word Her means face. And so we're saying every face. And we have to we have to really appreciate these other these languages and how how they made use of of a figurative way of expressing many things. All right. And maybe I'll do a, a, a quick lesson or we, we all may do as a group do a show on the figurative aspect of of language, especially in ancient Kemet. But every face is another way of saying everyone because everyone has a face. Uh, Waneb, everyone, the word wa meaning one, literally one, or unique. Then we have ketnebet, everything. And another example, every day is expressed as raneb, and it literally means every sun. But because the sun takes place or rises or shows itself every day, or each day, then we can say every sun as an equivalent of every day. So another equivalent of, of every is the word chenu. And it's also written in two ways. You see these two variations, chenu. But this time it precedes the substantive as in the expression chenu dau. I'm excuse me, chenu duau, every morning. All right. And I'm going to skip the adjective key other and go straight to adjectival phrases. And so, like I said, I want to keep this brief. And this will be uh, the last thing that I, I cover. Um, I want to do adjectival phrases because to show the appreciation for for how these words or phrases were expressed. And you'll, you should find them interesting because it's things that we, we still do to this very day. So adjectival phrases. Uh, most people may know, be familiar with this called the beautiful of face or nefer construction. For those who may be familiar with the grammar or have done some studies or have taken some classes already. Um, it's called the neferher construction or beautiful of face phrase. But it is an adjectival phrase. That's what it is. So adjectival phrases are strings of words consisting of an adjective and the words that are subordinated to it. Scribes commonly employed an adjectival phrase in epithets qualifying an individual or a place indicating more precisely to what the quality applies. One type of adjectival phrase is the beautiful of face phrase. It attributes properties to one aspect of a person. So we have nefer her, which means one beautiful of face. And it's an idiom. See, beautiful of face. Now we, we literally that's what that's saying, but it's an idiom to use for kindly or merciful. Because if you have a, a a beautiful face meaning that you have a favorable expression on your face and so it's somebody who is kindly or merciful someone who who is warm you see how that works uh, the adjective nefer beautiful one 
relates to the substantive hair face, as the two substantives are a direct genitive bound construction, such as, and here's an example, uh, hut hair or hut heru. And most people will be familiar with this as the name Hathor or Het Heru. Right? So here's some more examples. We have Wab Jabau, which means clean of fingers. You can imagine what that means, clean of fingers. Then we have Ken Gaba F, which is valiant of his arm. Gaba meaning arm and F is a second person masculine pronoun for he or his. Next example, we have Saped uh, Abwi, which means sharp of horns. And you can see the horns here. Abwi is horns. And this is dual, two horns. And last one here is Ahapesh, which is great, which is Ahapesh, strength. All right. Now, uh, this is where it gets very, very, uh, um, it gets nice. So some literal transliter translations of adjectival phrase seem awkward in English. You know, if I go back up, these would be pretty awkward if we say clean of fingers. We don't talk like that in English. Valiant of his arm, sharp of horns, great of strength. See, we don't we don't speak like that, but this is what it would literally be translated as. But in English, we would take take these phrases and we would we would come up with a one word way expression for the same thing. So here's some examples. So for example, we have the phrase wasak ib, which is literally wide of heart. But we know no one's heart is really wide, but it's an idiom for the word generous or inventive. You know, the expansion of the heart. Okay, uh, another one, wemet ib, thick of heart. If you have a thick heart, that's not taken literal. It's it's an idiom for the word bold, to say that you're bold, you're a bold person, and it could also mean stubborn. You know. And we have another one, hedge hair. Literally, is bright of face. But no one's face is lit up like a light, literally, but it's meaning cheerful. It's a phrase that we would say as cheerful. That's how we would translate it. And lastly, we have uh, na ib, which is smooth of heart. And somebody who is smooth of heart, uh, and smooth of heart means it's not beating fast or slow or sporadic. That means that you're calm. And a calm person is a kind and considerate person. All right, so you can see how these literal um, words form idioms in the language and this is how we would translate it today all right and let's see okay I'll read a little bit further and then we'll the, I'll conclude with that I don't want this to be too too long so we have adjectival phrases can sometimes also rese resemble the indirect genitive with the genitival adjective ni which means of belonging to intervening and this may be a little technical because I'm just jumping in to this and but prior to this you would have already learned or known what genitival adjectives are etc but hopefully this is this will be clear in such cases a suffix pronoun is often attached to the substantive in the phrase as in eker ni jabau f which means skilled with his fingers that's somebody who, who is very, very, very talented in skills, like they're good with their hands. All right. They can they can fix things. They can do things. They can do things very well. But literally, it is excellent. The word eker means excellent. Nijabau, excellent of fingers. And then we have the F on the end for his fingers. Eker nijabau F, excellent of his fingers. All right, so I'll end there because uh, it, it it will get off into some more uh, technical, maybe technical. I, I want to keep this brief. So I will take a little bit of time. Um, hopefully that was understood and clear. So let me just do a quick recap then. Um, so something to remember 
is that we have two words nib all right they're different words one word they look the same in the writing in the in the when it's written they both use a basket and they're both transliterated the same and also they're both pronounced the same by the way to by uh means of today's conventional pronunciations we we say neb but there's two different words neb as an adjective meaning all every etc then there's neb that means master or lord or owner or possessor that's the one that people are more familiar with neb tawi the master of the two lands or lord of the two lands and the feminine form of that is nebet tawi uh, now, what's interesting is that we'll translate Neb as Lord, but when we say Nebet for the feminine, we don't say Lordess. Uh, most Egyptologists will translate that as mistress. And in English, we think of a mistress uh, as a side chick. You know, most people think of a mistress as somebody, somebody's, you know, alternative wife or something. And that's that's an inaccurate um, description of that. Nebet is lady, you know, uh, or lordess, or female master or lord or owner, etc. So you know, make sure you definitely understand that. But anyway, those are two different words: neb as a noun and neb as an adjective. So that's one thing to remember. So that's what we went over. And then uh, the other thing we went over, obviously, just now was the. Um, these phrases, these phrases that, um, if taken literally, would be kind of confusing to us in English, but they are idioms within the language, and you'll find them, and there's a lot of them. These are just a few examples. All right. But the lesson here is to understand distributive adjective, neb, and then the uh, adjectival, one example of adjectival phrases, which is the beautiful of face phrase. Most people may be familiar with it as the nefer hair construction. All right. So with that, um, I will look at the chat and see if anybody's actually watching. And if anybody has any questions. Now, I noticed that when I when I um, do these live uh, Facebook live and I look at the chat. There are comments that I miss for whatever reason. Um, they, they all don't show up. Um, when I look and it's only when I've I finished and I come back to it that I see comments that I missed So if I missed your comment in the past or even right now uh, um, You know, I apologize for that But I'm looking right now and I'm gonna say hotep. I do see people have tuned in so uh, hotep I appreciate it. Um, you watching. Hopefully this is a bite-sized digestible lesson For you and you um, can benefit from it All right, so let's see are there any questions? If there are no questions, then I will hope that that means that everything was clear. All right, see, wash your hands, Hasatep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we say that someone has a big heart instead of wide of heart. Exactly. Big heart, you're kind. You know, oh, you're so kind. Oh, you have a big heart. You know, you're, you're giving. You're a giving person. You have a big heart. Uh, that's what we say as well Now I don't see any questions So I'm guessing that everybody's just tuned in Kind of hanging I appreciate that But I don't want to drag this out So I will conclude And uh, say do I For those who have tuned in I'm Trying to stall a little bit To see if anybody has a question In the last minute You know how, how we are <laughs> Right when you pack it up and get ready to leave, you know, yeah. Have you ever experienced, you know, you give a presentation or a lecture and you finish giving your lecture, you open up for question and answer. No one really has a question. But then when you pack it up, shutting down and some people come up to you with the side bill. Um, you know, I did have a question and <laughs> it always happens. Uh, I guess that's pretty normal for us. All right. So I don't see any any questions. All right. So. Check out the other videos, or let me make sure I am still on here. Let me make sure I can see this properly. Because I would hate to miss any. I like questions. It lets me know what people what people are focused on. 
and what's on their mind. Okay, so uh, I say, say dua, and I will say Shemem Hotep, and I will say Gare Nefer, which is um, good night. And Shemem Hotep, I will see you next time for the next lesson. Also, remember, if you have a question, even if you don't think of one right now, or those who will watch this as an archive, still type in your question in the comment, because I go back to the, these videos and check the comments and try my best to answer the questions. Um, and if I don't know, then I'll let you know that more research is needed or whatever the case is. And um, and also, if you have a suggestion on something that you may have wanted to know about the language, uh, may have confused you or just curious about, then, uh, you know, put it in a comment as well, because I, I would like to, you know, handle things what interest people. All right. And ho in hopes that this will kind of dispel a lot of the the uh, misinformation that's out there and and claims that have kind of occupied our time, our mind and our time for for too long. All right. So um, I will say if I can get my cursor back. Let's see. All right. So anyway, I will say Shimon Hotep and I will see you all next time.